We're going to look at how to compare an individual to the rest of the distribution by seeing how many standard deviations it is from the mean. And that's the technique used uh, to find something called the z-score. Let's imagine you have a standardized test and the average score, the mean score, is 600. The standard deviation is 40. Remember, the standard deviation is a measure of how far spread apart on average people's scores are. When we go down here, it says, how many standard deviations from the mean are you if you score a 680? Well, if the mean is 600, and you go above one standard deviation, you get to 640. If you go above two standard deviations, you get to 680. Same thing the other way. If you go down one standard deviation, 560, down two, you get to 520. Well, what we want to know is where that 680 falls. And we said that that's going to be up here. That's two chunks of 40 above 600. That's two standard deviations above the mean. And so by going two standard deviations above the mean, our z-score is going to be just simply two. For cases that don't come out quite as cleanly in a nice clean integer like we had here, there is a formula. And first we're going to go over the different terms uh, that we're going to see in this formula. Z uh, re refers to the z-score. The other one's x is the individual that you're looking for, the score that you have. So in that last example, it was the 680 that this person scored. Mu, the little u with the tail on it, is the mean, the average score. And then sigma, the o with the tail, uh, is the standard deviation that goes on the bottom. In this case, it was 40. So if we're going to pop values into this formula here. We're going to have our 680, the value we care about, minus our mean of 600 on top, and then on bottom we're going to have our standard deviation of 40. 680 minus 600 is going to simply be 80 on top, and then on bottom our 40. 80 divided by 40 is going to give us the exact same answer we got on the last slide without using any formulas, just using our intuition, uh, and it's going to give us a 2. The reason why we use the formula once in a while is it helps us when we have numbers that are a little bit less intuitive, like the following. This example has very similar numbers to the last one. Our mean is still 600, our standard deviation is still 40, but our value of interest, the x, is going to be 530 this time. So this value is going to change. Now, 530, if we're just going to do a quick estimate in our head, is below 600. So our z-score is going to be negative. So whenever you have a value that's below the mean, it's always going to be a negative z-score. And we can see that it's definitely more than 40, but not quite 80 below 600. So it's going to be somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2. If we take our values and plug them in, we have on top x minus mu, our 530 minus our 600 on top, and that's divided by our standard deviation of 40. 530 minus 600 is negative 70. And then on bottom we still have our 40. And then finally negative 70 divided by 40 is going to be negative 1.75. And if you feel comfortable with these calculations in your head, that's great. Otherwise, there's no problem using a calculator on things like this. Uh, again, the reason we have the formula is because sometimes it can get a little bit less intuitive when we start running into fractions or decimals. So in this case, negative 1.75, our z-score, our value is 1.75 standard deviations below the mean.